Hello dear students, I am Vinay MS, Assistant Professor of English, Government First Grade College Siddhakate, Bandpur Taluk, Dakshinakanda District. I am going to give you a video lesson on APRO JRT by Sudha Murthy. This is a lesson prescribed for second semester BCom in Mangalore University in the paper Compulsory Foundation Course in English. So let me first go to the introduction about the lesson, uh, about the author. Sudha uh, is an Indian technologist, philanthropist and writer. He is a technologist, expert in technology, philanthropist. This word is important for you uh, because there might a question turn up in one word substitution. Uh, who is a philanthropist. A philanthropist is someone who seeks the welfare of others, especially through general donations, maybe donating money and other things. So here in this case, Sudhamurthy is also a philanthropist and also a writer. So she was born in Karnataka. She belonged to Haveri a native. When she was born in Haveri and belonged to Hubli, and studied uh, in uh, computer science, studied computer science and engineering at uh, IISC, uh, the, which is located at Bangalore. IISC, when, then when she was studying, was known as Tata Institute. Uh, she began uh, her career in uh, Telco in 1981. Here, uh, Telco is Tata Engineering and Locomotive Company. Uh, and later, uh, she founded Enforces Infosys with her husband Narayan Murthy. You all know Infosys is the uh, second largest IT company in India, which was founded in the 1981 by Narayan Murthy and uh, six uh, uh, software uh, professionals, and other six uh, software professionals. Uh, the interesting fact is that Narayan Murthy used rupees 10,000, uh, which was actually the savings saved by Sudha Murthy then and it, that money was used as the initial capital. Later, Sudha Murthy in uh, 1996 started Infosys Foundation. Uh, it's a non-profit organization which supports uh, uh, programs in the field of health, healthcare, rural development, education and art. You all know probably about uh, 70,000 libraries have been uh, established in different schools of Karnataka by Infosys Foundation. Yes, here we can consider her as a philanthropist. And other than that, the, the important thing is that she is a prolific writer in Kannada and uh, English, in both Kannada and English. A prolific writer because she has produced a number of works in different genres or types. She has published novels, short stories, and essays and travelogues. Essays are also, and this is an essay that we are uh, dealing with now. And she has also published two travel acts. Travel acts are uh, uh, st uh, travel stories. Okay. And uh, uh, besides, uh, she also writes columns for uh, newspapers. Okay, let's come to the essay now. The essay recalls J.R.D. Tata, who gave her the first break in her career. Yes, she was uh, appointed as an engineer uh, in uh, 1981 at Telco. Uh, in its uh, of in its um, facility at Pune, and uh, this gave break to her life or her journey in the uh, uh, in the field of uh, IT industry, and this essay highlights uh, the simplicity and vision of J.R.D. Tata and how he influenced her life. Uh, the essay recounts a job ad posted by a job advertisement which was posted by Telco at uh, IISC campus and uh, which stated uh, a particular line, lady candidates need not apply, uh, which made her to write a letter to JRD protesting against the uh, discrimination. It was the beginning of an association that changed her life. You know, this, uh, uh, this happens in everybody's life. Sometimes, a, um, yeah, true. A stone cannot become uh, a sculpture or uh, um, a statue or something unless it receives uh, uh, such kind of uh, um, you know, patronage and such kind of uh, um, 
in turning point in life. Similarly, in, uh, in the life of Sudhamurti, this was the turning point where uh, uh, she went to Pune for an interview and got selected at uh, Telco. So the essay recounts those experiences of her uh, life. Yeah, let's move on to the essay now. Uh, the opening of the text. I have divided the uh, slides here so as to support uh, the comprehension section that you have in uh, uh, your text. So opening of the text. So in the beginning of the essay, she states there are two photographs that hung, that are hung, or that uh, they, they 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 hang, they, 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 that are hung on the of her office wall of her, and when uh, whenever on every day when she enters her office, she look at them and uh, she pay her respect to those photos. The picture of they were actually the picture of two old people. One is of a gentleman in a blue suit and uh, the other is uh, a black and white image of a man with the dreary eyes and a white beard. So you see two images, so they are of both uh, um, uh, old people. Now naturally this uh, made people to ask her question, that is, uh, uh, who are those people in um, photograph? Are they related to her in any way? Some have even asked her, is this black and white photo that of a Sufi saint or a religious guru? Look at interesting. Either the Prashnegalana or the other religious guru and no Prashnegalana Janru or Naked Taidu. In all those cases, she smiles and replies, No, nor are, nor, nor are they related to me. Uh, these people made an impact on my life. I'm grateful to them. Very simple answer. I'm, they are not related to me, but they made impact on my life. I am grateful to them. So, who are they? Of course, people are curious to know those two important people who influenced a, a chairman of a, a, a of a, of Infosys Foundation. She is the chairman of Infosys Foundation and uh, she, she is a um, wife of the CEO. So therefore, they asked, who are they? She answers, the man in the blue suit is Bharat Ratna J.R.D. Tata and the black and white photo is of James Shetji Tata. So you see, uh, she has that kind of reverence or respect for those two people and therefore, uh, she kept their photos and she wanted to uh, pay her respects to uh, respects to those photos every day, uh, those two people every day. And now she answered, uh, they are Bhartha Ratna Jihadi Tata and Jain Shadji Tata. Again they question, but why do, uh, why do you have them in your office? Yeah, so that is the question now. She replies, you can call it gratitude. Again a very simple answer, gratitude. Because in most often we receive so many favors from others, but we do not pay our um, pay back in terms of gratitude. We don't have to pay anything, but showing just gratitude is enough. Because if gratitude is unexpressed, it is not gratitude at all. How can others can realize it? Therefore, she simply said it is gratitude. This recurring incident leads uh, her to uh, her story of the past. Whenever people asked uh, these questions uh, and uh, the repeated questions which uh, were asked about those two photographs made her to go back to the story uh, that she's going to deal with now in this uh, uh, essay. Let's move on to the next slide, which is about her story of the past. A story uh, that happened a long time ago when she was young and bright, bold and idealistic. This, this, was, this is the life of the youth. That she was young, bright, bold and idealistic, having ideals uh, in mind, right? idealistic. Bright, bold, these are the adjectives used here. You see, uh, she was in the final year of her uh, master's degree in computer science at uh, IISC in Bangalore. Yeah, as I, I already told you, it was known as Tata Institute, then not uh, IISC, Indian Institute of Science. Um, she was in the final year degree of uh, her com uh, master's degree, PD, postgraduate degree in uh, computer science. Uh, it was April, naturally April of it was April of 1974. Naturally, April means it was uh, it's warm, and the IASC campus 
uh, had the bloom of red gulmohars. Another interesting thing is April uh, is the season of spring. Right? Uh, April comes in the season of spring. We will see everywhere flower bloom. Uh, so there was a uh, there was a bloom of red gulmohars. Nibla no de like sapu. Dutta uh raste badiali takanta maragalali, marada tudialella uh haladi to kempu vanna the hudikiana on the hudisi the riti ali who wana bidta kanta the gulmohar uh maragalu. So ali kuda bloom, tumba mara hugalu arali dana morte. She was the only girl in her PG department staying at the ladies hostel while others were doing research. You also see here, she was doing her PG and others were doing uh, research. Actually, she had thought of going abroad and uh, completing a doctorate in computer science, PhD or doctorate in computer science. And uh, she, in fact, uh, she had been offered scholarships from universities in the US also for that. Uh, scholarship will put a sickito, Hagagi, Videsha Kehogi, other US Kehogi, or Adiano Namundurs, or Chinte, Chintane Kudaitu. She had not thought of uh, taking up a job in India. Yeah, never she thought of uh, taking a job in India. This uh, uh, incident, uh, past story, it leads to uh, uh, in the next uh, uh, context uh, where she has a first experience of gender. Uh, discrimination. There is a question that what was her first experience of gender discrimination in her textbook. Similarly, here you see on her way to the hostel uh, from her lecture hall complex, uh, she saw an advertisement of a standard job requirement by the famous telco. Yeah. Uh, after finishing her uh, uh, studies or uh, um, uh, her classes at the uh, uh, lecture hall complex at IASC. She was on her way back to her hostel. So in the notice board, she saw a uh, standard uh, job requirement ad. It was actually by a famous company. It was famous company then Telco. Because I told you in the beginning that uh, Infosys is the second largest IT company in India. The first one is uh, TCS, Tata Consultancy uh, Service. So Tata's have been uh, in uh, dominance throughout India uh, in the field of industry. You see here again uh, Telco's uh, ad. And the uh, ad was about uh, the company requiring young, bright engineers, hardworking and with an uh, excellent academic background. These are the natural qualities for any job. Young or uh, bright engineers, hardworking is a common quality needed for almost all the jobs with an excellent academic background. They also seek for uh, excellent uh, academic background and there was an interesting line in the bottom of the ad that is lady candidates need not apply this catches her attention lady candidates need not apply the job is not meant for ladies then she becomes upset reading as the uh, as the first time in her life she faced uh, gender discrimination because a job which is uh, from a very well-known company, a reputed company, excludes women from that, screens out effectively women entering that industry. This made her feel disappointed. So though she not wanted the job, because I told you in the beginning itself that uh, she wanted to study abroad, go abroad, and uh, though she not wanted the job, she saw it as a challenge and being extremely well in academics, you know, she was extremely well in academics. Uh, compared to her male peers, uh, she understood that academic excellence is not enough to be successful in real life. Yeah, this is one thing. Sometimes whatever the academic achievement you have, there are other things which decide the progress. But uh, we also uh, have to draw, infer one thing from her life that uh, her academic excellence, I should say something about her academic excellence. In masters, she was a gold medalist, uh, master's degree in uh, computer science. In uh, bachelor's degree, in uh, bachelor's in engineering, uh, yeah, of all the throughout the Karnataka, she was the topper and she received gold medal from Devraj Aras uh, then. So she is also a recipient of uh, Padma Shri Award that I didn't mention in the beginning. So such an academic excellence she had, and uh, we have to infer one thing from here from her life that that academic excellence can definitely give something to life or a position to. Uh, life that is proved later on, but uh, they at that point of time she experienced that uh, only academic uh, excellence cannot bring success in life because of this ad, which uh, particularly mentioned that uh, women uh, ladies cannot apply for the post. Let's move next. A letter to J.R.D. Tata. 
she did not stay neutral or passive as we see in the case of many who do not do not act uh, um, for uh, these kind of uh, discriminations instead she wrote a letter to jrd tata reading the notice she went fuming to her room fuming means kopadinda her room odru became angry furious and decided to inform the topmost person in telco about the injustice ಇದೊಂದು ಇಂಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಅನ್ಯಾಯ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಯಾರಿಗೆ ತಿಳಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಟಾಪ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೆಲ್ಕು ಆ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯ ಟಾಪ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಗೆ ನಾನು ತಿಳಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ಶಿ ಡಿಸೈಡೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಎ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಎಡ್ ಟು ರೈಟ್ ಬರೋದು ಒಂದು ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ಅನ್ನ ಲೆಟರ್ ಅನ್ನ ತಗೊಂಡು ಬರೋದ್ರು ಬಟ್ ಶಿ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ಹೂ ಹೆಡ್ ಎಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ಕೊ ಇವತ್ತಿಂದ ಹಾಗೆ ಗೂಗಲ್ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ರೈಟ್ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ತಾ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಟೆಲ್ಕೊ ಹೆಡೆಡ್ ಯಾರು ಯಾರಿದ್ರು ಅದರ ಮುಖ್ಯಸ್ಥರು ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಜೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಟಾಟಾ yeah he was a famous person then and she concluded that it was jrd tata and who was the head of the tata group and she did not know it was sumant molgonkar uh, who was the head of uh, telco then she did not address the letter to sumant therefore it was to jrd tata and she addressed the letter to jrd and uh, wrote the card to him and the letter was like this i would like to read out that the quote the great uh, tatas have always been pioneers they are the people who started the, the basic infrastructure industries in india such as iron and steel chemicals textiles and locomotives they have cared for higher education in india since 1900 and they were responsible for the establishment of the indian institute of science fortunately i study there but i'm surprised how a company such as telco is discriminating on the basis of gender very effective letter which highlighted all the glory and grandeur and success of the tata group and finally with the conclusion that such a grand company which has grand background which has uh, such kind of uh, uh, heritage uh, positive things is neglecting women it's showing discrimination against the women uh, women or gen- making gender discrimination uh, this is very effectively written therefore and the letter was sent to posted to jrd tata yes let's see what is the re- impact of the letter the response she received the next slide you see she received response uh, she never thought of receiving a response and uh, she in course of time gradually she forgot about it the letter was not there in her mind at all but within 10 days she received a telegram inviting her to an interview at telcos um, pune facility at the company's expense you see she was invited to interview at the institute's uh, office in institute's uh, uh, one of the branches in the pune pune facility and uh, at the company's expense remember the company would pay the expense she was taken aback what is taken aback yeah she was surprised taken aback, taken aback means surprised by it and uh, the hostel mates told her to use the opportunity for what to go to pune free of cost and buy them some uh, famous uh, 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 pune sarees for uh, uh, they were available at a very cheaper price in pune then you see um, they all uh, took it as a funny thing and uh, uh, she was given money also she collected rupees 30 each rupees 30 right women must uh, pay attention to this there was only it, that was only 30 uh, rupees then for each sari and from everyone she collected that and the reasons for her going uh, looks funny now true right uh, because she went uh, pune not to attend the interview or uh, get a job but uh, uh, to buy some sarees for herself and uh, to her friends so it's it looks funny now but then uh, it seemed good enough to make the trip yeah it was then the reason was good enough to make the trip remember though it may be funny now but that very funny trip provided a, a great uh, breakthrough in her life isn't it that's why uh, using every opportunity that knocks on a door is very important in life let's move on to next time slide moving to pune and uh, change in life yeah next course of her life we can see she moved to pune and it changed her entire um, uh, course of life yeah the it was the first visit to pune and uh, she naturally liked the uh, the city and uh, even now uh, she says uh, she feels dear uh, of that city and uh, she even uh, compares uh, it with her own uh, native hubli and uh, uh, and she particularly likes that city because it changed her uh, life also so at telco's uh, pimpri office uh, 
the interview was there and the interview consisted of uh, six experts in the panel and among those uh, panel members one of them whispered in a light voice who spoke this is the girl who wrote to jrd yes when she entered the as she entered the interview room one of the experts told the other that she this is the girl who wrote to jrd and when she heard that she concluded that she would not get the job and abolished all fear of the mind and became cool you see she did not protest or become angry or something but when she heard that she concluded she did not she won't get the job she would not get that job this made her abolish means uh, eliminate all her fear avala uh, sorry avara hedrike ella ellavanna avaru tegidru and become cool cool adru and riti cool adadanna na nortebe so idana nantra nave en nortivi reckon reckoned uh, the panel as biased biased you uh, nortiri a idi panel anna avaru its biased gender biased athwa bere reetiyalli purvagraha peeditavagide anta avaru ond complaint anna maartare and uh, it actually shocked the members of the uh, interview committee and she behaved very rudely and now she feels sorry for that kind of rude behavior she showed them but interesting thing is she answered all the technical questions or uh, you know asked to her an elderly gentleman in uh, uh, with an affectionate voice in the interview told her the reason to exclude him into there yeah so there um, an elderly gentleman told her the reason why they excluded the women yeah uh, the reason is uh, that uh, it was a uh, uh, it was um, floor work right uh, they were not allowed to uh, do the floor work uh, the, and uh, they did not apply and they did not employ any women so far right this is the first woman you know that uh, more thing that she's the first one the first engineer to get a uh, um, uh, job in the it in the industry and therefore they had never employed anyone and they also had an opinion that women would uh, fit to laboratory laboratories to carry on research therefore they excluded it and having limited worldly knowledge she answered but you must start some way otherwise no women will be able to work in your factories probably uh, she concluded that the starting a company is as easy as something and uh, she uh, uh, she told them to start some company somewhere and then a long interview selected her uh, and revealed the future which uh, uh, she never thought and finally she got uh, appointed at pune and uh, there she met uh, narayan murthy also he was a shy man as she describes and uh, both became good friends and finally she got married uh, to him so that's how uh, the life at uh, the entry moving to pune which uh, changed the course of life so let's come to the uh, very core idea of the lesson that is her meeting with uh, jrd tata her mrs smoothie's encounters with jrd tata there is an important question in the comprehension part also joining telco she realized who jrd was he was the uncrowned king of indian industry because no so many um, uh, industrial setups were there and she did not meet him till uh, she was transferred to bombay true that's that is another thing she came to know when she joined the telco who was jrd you see uh, a, a, a picture of him here and uh, at the same time uh, one more thing that while working at pune she could not meet him at all when she transferred to bombay there she met him to show some reports yeah now let's see the incident of meeting jrd she went to meet mr mulgonkar sumant mulgonkar on day to show some reports and he was in uh, his office at the bombay house that was known as that was the tata headquarters and suddenly uh, uh, jrd walked in jrd tata walked in she saw approach jrd the first time we see the usage appro here the title appro or the expression appro is uh, a gujarati word which means uh, uh, our it's an affectionate term by which the people uh, in uh, that uh, bombay uh, house called uh, jrd tata so next uh, when uh, when we see here that she felt nervous why because her because of her past incident that she wrote a letter to uh, him questioning the very um, ad that's why she got nervous uh, mr mulgonkar 
uh, introduced her as a, an engineer and uh, the two a postgraduate also the first woman to work on the telco's shop floor yeah, women were not appointed to shop floor telco shop floor she was the first woman to uh, work at the telco's shop floor jardi looked at her while she was praying he would not ask her any question about uh, her interview and uh, the postcard that preceded the incident of the postcard that preceded it and uh, thankfully he did not do that to uh, her and uh, we see in the next uh, uh, important thing here that instead of uh, um, all those things he remarked it's nice that girls are getting into engineering in our country now by the way what's your name that is a question from uh, jardi when he asked that question uh, she replied when i joined telco i was sudha kulkarni sir and now i am sudha murthy he smiled and uh, started a discussion with uh, malgonkar while she ran out of the room this is how the first meeting uh, took place between uh, mrs Go on to next slide. Now it continues her meeting. So she used to see J R D on and off uh, uh, as the Tata Group chairman, uh, uh, and she was merely an engineer. When we compare her with the J R D, she was merely an engineer, and uh, nothing common between them. And she was in she was in awe of him because of the earlier incident. She was in awe of him. Wherever uh, she meets him, she had the fear. She met him, and there was fear. one day uh, there happened an incident that is recounted here so she was waiting for uh, mr murthy narayan murthy to pick her up uh, after her office hours at that time she saw jrd standing next to her she got puzzled to react uh, and uh, she started worrying uh, about that postcard incident uh, worried about the postcard but uh, realized jrd had forgotten it and a small incident for him but uh, not uh, uh, so for her yeah, so see uh, that later incident might be a very small incident for him he might he might receive he might have received so many such letters but for her it's a big incident it turned her very course of life then uh, he asked her why she was there jrd asked her why she was there for which she replied she has uh, finished her office hours and uh, uh, duty at the office and waiting for her husband to come and uh, pick her up so jrd said he would wait with her till murthy comes as it is getting dark yeah this is important here so a chairman of a big industrial group is responding to a simple employee of his uh, uh, company he says he, he would wait for her till uh, her husband comes because there is a reason the reason is that it was getting dark and it was not safe for women then and uh, uh, here uh, she was used to waiting for uh, murthy every day almost but this time she became extremely uncomfortable because she had to wait with jrd uh, for the arrival of her husband she again became uh, nervous but uh, uh, at the corner of her eye she looked at him Uh, she describes him he wore a simple white pant and shirt he was old yet his face was glowing shining glowing also without any air of superiority there was no air of the simplicity was against that air of superiority that was not there at all in him she wondered about the generosity of him yeah. again Uh, we see generosity here audharya vanna nam nortteve nanu nimmottige wait madavalle anta avaru decision madidru this is generosity which we rarely see in uh, in, uh, in uh, such kind of people today then uh, she saw murthy and uh, she rushed out yeah immediately when uh, murthy came and uh, she rushed out jhandi called and said one thing young lady tell your husband never to make his wife wait again yeah there is a slight reminder given by jrd to uh, her and uh, tell her husband the same yeah likewise the meeting continues and then uh, the next uh, uh, thing we observe it is a uh, leaving uh, telco she resigned uh, telco in uh, 1982 uh, she was reluctant to go but did not have a choice reluctant and you know hesitant hinjarike ippu bit hoglikke she had to resign resign martare 1982 alli coming down the steps of bombay house bombay house na tata headquarters ne the after finishing all the procedures of resignation uh, she was coming down ilug bartha idu steps nalli she saw jrd coming up the stairs uh, absorbed in thought 
ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ಕೂಡ ದಾರಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಿಗ್ತಾರೆ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಯಾವುದೋ ಒಂದು ಯೋಚನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಯೋಚನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಟು ಸೇ ಗುಡ್ ಬೈ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಶಿ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ಡ್ ನಿಲ್ತಾರೆ ಇವರು ಸುಧಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಅವರು ಅವರಿಗೆ ಗುಡ್ ಬೈ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಿಲ್ತಾರೆ ಅಟ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ and at that moment when he asked uh, what what was she doing and uh, he she replied uh, him um, that she was leaving telco this uh, she revealed him that she was leaving telco uh, people might think uh, in a, a, a different way or the response would be very different in case if someone employee is re- resigning from some job but the reply from uh, jrd was very different here when he asked uh, uh where she was going she replied that uh, uh, she was shifting to pune where her husband was starting a company called infosys that was the beginning days of infosys and she said she would go and uh, settle at pune he asked her what would uh, she do then uh, when she becomes successful this is interesting a question from jrd what would she do if she becomes successful in the company so she replied uh with no answer actually she had no answer for this he advised her never start with diffidence diffidence means with less confidence but always start something with confidence he said when you are successful you must give back to society yeah when you become successful you must give back to society society gives us so much avaru heltare society nam sakashtu kodutte we must reciprocate ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಬಸಿ ಪ್ರೊಕೆಟ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಹಿಂದಿರುಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಸಮಾಜಕ್ಕೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ಮಾತನ್ನು ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಹಿ ವಿಶ್ ಹರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಶಿ ಮೆಟ್ ರತನ್ ಟಾಟಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬಾಂಬೆ ಹೌಸ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೈಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಚೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಜೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಹೆಲ್ಡ್ ಜಪಾನ್ ಇನ್ ಟೈಮ್ ರತನ್ ಟಾಟಾ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಬಹಳ ವರ್ಷದ ನಂತರ ಶಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಮೆಮೊರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಟೆಲ್ಕೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೇಟರ್ ಹಿ ರೋಟ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ru ratan tata wrote to her it was nice hearing him uh, about uh, uh, from you the sad part is that he isn't alive to see you today the death of jerry was announced uh, to her like this she did not know that then then uh, move on to the last jerry as a uh, as an ideal role model for uh, sudha murthy and this is also another important uh, section of the lesson Jerry is a great man because uh, despite being an extremely busy person he valued a postcard by an unknown young girl seeking justice this is important the first point we observe here is that the the postcard was sent by an unknown girl he would have thrown it to someone he must have received thousands of such uh, letters and he could have thrown it he could have thrown it away right yellow just been hakirabodittu but he didn't do that instead he respected uh, her intention intention of an unknown girl parichayavelada hudige agidanta sudhamurthi avara intention icche anna respect madidru who had neither influence nor money adannu kuda observe maadi yav influence illa hana illa and gave her an opportunity in his company he did not merely give her job he changed her life and mindset forever kandita right bari kelasavanna kottadalla avara avara badukina sudhamurthi avara badukina ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಪಾತ್ ಏನಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಚೇಂಜ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಹಿ ಪೇವ್ಡ್ ವೇ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಲೈಫ್ ಇನ್ ಹರ್ ಹರ್ ಜರ್ನಿ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎನದರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ವೈ ಜೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಎಸ್ ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಸಿ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲೇಜಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗರ್ಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಸಿ ಎ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರೇಬಲ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ದಿಸ್ Uh, these things are uh, credited to jrd um, according to uh, sudakshi sudamurthy uh, she says uh, these are uh, the changes and uh, she thinks of jrd for that and uh, she feels if time asks her what she wants from life she would wish jrd to be alive today to see how their company has grown yeah there is one desire in her that if there is a chance of uh, you know um, asking some ಬೂಮ್ ಕೇಳುವಂಥದ್ದು ಸಮಯಕ್ಕೆ ಸಮಯ ಏನಾದರೂ ಕೇಳಿದರೆ ಖಂಡಿತವಾಗಿ ಕೇಳೋದೇನು ಅಂದರೆ ಜೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಈಗ ಜೀವಂತ ಇದ್ದು ನಮ್ಮ ಬೆಳವಣಿಗೆಯನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ಕಂಪನಿಯ ಉನ್ನತಿಯನ್ನು ಒಮ್ಮೆ ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಬಯಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಂಟ್ರಿ ಮನ್ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಂಜಾಯ್ ಇಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫೈನಲಿ ಶಿ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ಐ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಬೈ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಶಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ that love and respect for the house of tatas and it remains in her undiminished 
ಅಂಡಿಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯಾವತ್ತೂ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಆಗುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ಬೈ ದ ಪ್ಯಾಸೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸಮಯ ಕಳೆದಂತೆ ಅದು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಆಗುವಂತದ್ದಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಗೌರವ್ ಅಂತ ನಾನು ಹೊಂದಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಶಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಜೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೀಸ್ ಎ ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡೆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಜನರಾಸಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಕೇರ್ ಹಿ ಟುಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯೀಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಇ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಈವನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಗಾಂಧೀಜಿ ದೆನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಸಿಟಿ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಜೆ ಆರ್ ಡಿ and his generosity audaryate udaravanta manasu his kindness karunaya manasu and care he took of his employees yeah we can see the best demonstration of that in the case of sudhamurthy then those blue eyes had the same vastness and um, munifis uh, munif- munificence of the sky you see those blue eyes blue eyes of jrd tot have the same vastness of the sky you see a comparison is brought between the uh, vastness of sky and uh, uh, that uh, uh, broad mindedness of jrd here and munificence or generosity of him is uh, highlighted here thus the essay uh, shows here what influenced uh, sudhamurthy in her life and how it uh, her meeting with uh, jrd changed uh, the very course of her life and how jrd is a role model in her life and thank you so much for uh, listening to me